Y'all, this is Todd Foolery, and I normally don't do these types of videos, but I got a special treat today. Since posting my retrospective for Cousin Skeeter, not only have I been fortunate enough to chat with one of the actors from the show, but I also got the opportunity to interview the show's creator. And because of that, I decided to give y'all a little part two of sorts. Diving into fun behind the scenes details, as well as providing some interesting facts I didn't have space for in the retrospective. So if you want to know which 90s commercials sparked the idea for the show, or which actors never met in person until nearly a decade after it ended, or which 80s sitcoms influenced what the show eventually became, stay right there because this video's for you. Before we get started, thank you so much for watching. I release new videos when I do, so if you enjoy deep dives into television of decades past, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and notification bell this video to see more like it. As always, if you have any shows you'd like me to revisit, feel free to drop them down in the comment section, and if it fits my criteria and I can actually find episodes, I'll watch, research, and retrospect it. Last thing, I'll be posting the full interview with Alonzo Brown, the show's creator, next week. So if you want to see what he had to say about a Cousin Skeeter reboot, be sure to keep an eye out for that. Now let's dive in. There you have it, Your Honor. If the pig isn't fit, you must acquit. Real quick, if you haven't watched my Cousin Skeeter retrospective, I suggest you do so here. It includes a full detailed recap of the show in case you've forgotten because... I ain't doing it here. This is strictly an 11 things video. That said, the first thing you didn't know about the show is according to the creator, the idea for Cousin Skeeter came in the form of a mid to late 90s Nike commercial starring former NBA player Penny Hardaway. It featured an alter ego puppet version of Hardaway named Lil Penny who was voiced by Chris Rock. They would interact in various comedic situations without ever acknowledging the fact that Lil Penny was... Well, a little puppet. <laughs> and Alonzo Brown loved that concept, but for a full feature length film. So yeah, number two is Cousin Skeeter was originally supposed to be a movie. Can you imagine? Unfortunately, due to circumstances out of his control, that didn't work out. So Brown opted to reimagine the idea from scratch and pitch it to Nickelodeon as a television series instead. Which leads us to number three. In television form, Brown drew inspiration from two popular 80s sitcoms, ALF and The Cosby Show. In fact, he wanted Cousin Skeeter to be like a cool black ALF moving in with the Huxtables. Kinda makes more sense why Vanessa Walker is a lawyer now, huh? And since we're talking about Vanessa Walker, that can be our number four. While Angela Means didn't pursue too much of an acting career after the show concluded, she did go on to become a very successful vegan chef as the CEO of the Jackfruit Cafe where the restaurant has been named the best of LA and as a vegetarian, personally, I approve this message. She's also a humanitarian as well as an animal rights activist. So bye Felicia who? Number five, while filming everything needed to be shifted up a bit to allow room for the puppeteers to operate Skeeter and or Nicole. In fact, any sets they built had to be about four to five feet off the ground with trapdoors everywhere, which sometimes made it a bit tricky for actors navigating the set. This was also a single camera show, which wasn't common for sitcoms back then because most had three to four cameras simultaneously capturing multiple angles. Number six is a fun one. While Bill Bellamy is credited as the voice of Skeeter, that wasn't the case for the actors on set. On set, Skeeter was voiced by his puppeteer, Drew Massey. So that's the voice the cast got accustomed to hearing and it was a bit of a shock when they watched the final version of the show with Skeeter's voice completely different. And as a little bonus thing you didn't know, Drew Massey was actually also one of the voices for the chickens in the Foster Farms chicken commercials. So you can actually get a little sense of what the set version of Skeeter sounded like if you watch them. Number seven is basically the fact that Bill Bellamy didn't ever have to be on set to play his role of Skeeter. He was able to do all of his voiceover work from a studio, hence why he and Roundell Sheridan, the actor who played Andre Walker, didn't meet in person until nearly a decade after the show ended. That's wild. And since we're on the subject of Rondell Sheridan, number eight is gonna to pertain to him. Well, he's probably most known for his role as Victor Baxter, the father on That's So Raven and Corey in the House. His favorite role of all time? 
is actually his appearance in Stevie Wonder's Part-Time Lover music video from 1985. Look at him, it's a little dancing machine. Bonus fact, in college, Rondell Sheridan competed in cheerleading competitions for three and a half years. So this scene from Corey in the House, yeah, that was written in because Rondell mentioned it to one of the writers. Number nine brings us back to Bill Bellamy. Ninth thing you didn't know is Bill Bellamy and Shaq are related. They're cousins, like the show Cousin Skeeter, which may partially be why Shaq guest starred on the show, but also may be why number 10 happened. Shaq directed an episode of the show, y'all. Season one, episode seven, to be exact. And apparently that was enough for him to call it quits on directing for TV for good, based on this quote I found. This was also one of the episodes Nick Cannon is credited for co-writing, and again, it's just great to see the show featured so much black creative talent of the 90s. Now finally, number 11. You know how Skeeter is a fast talking, freestyle, and always scheming and trying to make it big as a rapper puppet? Well, that's loosely based on the creator's life. In the 80s, Alonzo Brown was one half of a hip hop duo called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So some of the get famous antics Skeeter found himself in are based on actual experiences. And for whatever reason, this is what I find the most fascinating. You watch this stick, and what a great pick. We'll be back real quick. So put down that brick. What brick? All right, and that's the list. Thanks so much for watching. Which one surprised you the most? Or what did you find the most interesting? Drop it down in the comments below and seriously, watch the interview with Alonzo Brown. It was really awesome talking to him, learning more about Cousin Skeeter and just getting an insider's perspective of the industry. And like I said, it'll be posted next week. Then we have the retrospective for my brother and me and I talked to one of the creators of that show too. And based on the poll I posted, it looks like we'll be revisiting the famous Jet Jackson after that, which is great because I literally just talked to the creator of that one as well. Following that, we have season three of The Secret World of Alex Mack, Tyena, the Brothers Garcia, and So Weird. So in the meantime, feel free to stick around, you know, click some buttons and check out the rest of my videos here. Go ahead and follow me on social. Then don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really helps me out. And subscribe with a side of notification bell. Until next time, shine on you crazy diamonds.